Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today we have two great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, a funny story about a pregnant girl who wanted to get cakes for free. The second story, the client wanted the restaurant to work on New Year's for his family. The first story is, Pregnant Karen tries to get $150 worth of cake for free. Background I used to work at a big Midwestern warehouse grocery store as soon as I graduated high school. Let's call it S-Mart. Worked there for almost four years back in the bakery department. I had the most amazing team I worked with. Corporate could suck a major D sometimes, but otherwise we may do. Me, a little confused, huh? K, pregnant Karen, in her late 20s, early 30s. AM, awesome manager, in his 50s. Don't care about your sob story. Story goes, I was working closing shift one night. Only one of us stays behind after 5 p.m. to clean everything, put stuff away, get custom cakes for people who ordered them, write on cakes, yada, yada, yada. I had worked there long enough, I knew the routine of regulars, and I could usually see if people could be trouble. So I just cleaned the floors and was in the back washing dishes and operating our very loud industrial dishwasher. Now, for context, picture this, our bakery, cake station at the front with a walkway to get into the bakery from the floor where customers are. Double doors at the back for employees only. Next to the doors was a big walk-in freezer, big mixing bowls, big wooden benches where we work dough and package product. Also a big walk-in oven and proofer, all where customers can see us. Next to the cake station is a weird angled wall that kind of hides the back that has a walk-in refrigerator and everything used to clean. Sink, bleach cleaners, etc. Back to the story. So, where I'm in the back cleaning, I would occasionally peek around the corner to see if customers were waiting for an employee, then get back to work. It's when I hear an ahem real close. This always scares me since I'm in the back with a loud dishwasher, so people have to be loud to get my attention. I turn around, and a male customer starts apologizing that he came into the bakery, like five to seven feet and walked in. But he was trying to get my attention. I tell him I understand, and he goes and stands in front of the cake station and I tell him I can't hear much with that darn dishwasher going. He chuckles and tells me he's here to pick up a cake order. He gives me his name and a yellow receipt, and I happily oblige and go around the weird angled wall back to our fridge to grab the only cake for pickup with his name on a white receipt attached to an adorable princess cake. I go back, set the cake down on the table we put the free cookies on, and open it up for him to look at. He loves it, says his little girl will love it, and he takes the cake, thanks me and heads up front to pay for it. I turn to head back to finish my dishes for the night. I just about turn the corner when I hear, excuse me. I turn around and a very pregnant lady is trying to wave me down before I retreat to my hidey hole. Doesn't look like a Karen, should be okay, right? K, excuse me, I have three cakes that I need to pick up. I've already paid for them. It's common for people to pay for cakes before they were made. They just have the receipt attached to the cake and the customer has a copy as well. It's our policy, especially for expensive or multiple cakes, to pay up front before we make them so we don't get stiffed last minute. I said, Me, oh, okay, ma'am. Give me a moment to check our fridge for your cakes. Could I get a name on that order? K, it's Karen Rageolots, uh, supposed to pick up at 6.30 p.m. Me, I'll be right back. She smiles when I notice her empty cart and also think I don't remember seeing any other cakes in the fridge. So I walk back to our fridge and walk in. Maybe they put her cakes in a different spot from the normal ones. I'm looking, looking, SH, where are the cakes? I walk out, put on my most calm voice and soft customer service smiles and say, me, sorry, ma'am, I couldn't see any more cakes for pickup in our fridge. Do you have your receipt and or order form? Giving me a dirty look now. K, why aren't my cakes in your fridge? I paid a lot of money for those special cakes, fine. She's furiously digging in her purse and hands me a yellow copy. Can't remember the name of it, but the paper where you write on the white sheet and it transfers to the yellow copy for the customer. SH, she got the expensive tiered birthday cakes, three of them. Each cake is worth $50 a piece. Then I think, uh, sometimes the decorators put the expensive cakes, especially the whipped icing ones in the freezer, so the colored frosting doesn't bleed to white icing. Me, oh, okay, these are bigger cakes. Sometimes they put them in the freezer so they stay looking perfect. Let me go take a look in there. Smug smirk ensues, and red flags start going off. 
I walk into our freezer, set it I can see my breath degrees, and stand there in the cold in an average polo, dress pants, and an apron, looking through the backup cakes for the floor, and think, oh, this lady is gonna go nuclear on me when I walk out with no cake. I stand in the freezer for five minutes, so she thinks I'm doing an intense search of our freezer. Nope, I'm thinking of what to do when I walk out. Tell her I'll call my manager and ask where the cakes are. Yeah, that's what I'll do. If I can get to the back doors, I can be free to panic and call my manager. So that's what I did. I walked out and told her that her cakes are not in the freezer, and before I could say more, K, are you guys that stupid you couldn't even make my cakes on time? Ah, uh, I knew I shouldn't have trusted that stupid decorator. She was incompetent, and I should have asked your master decorator to do it instead. If you don't have my cakes, you stupid idiot, I want to talk to the store manager and get a refund. I spent over $150 here and you don't have my cakes! Oh, red flag. Me, I'm so sorry about this inconvenience. Let me go call my manager and I'll definitely find where they put your cakes. Sometimes with special orders like this, they put them in another location so they don't get bumped into. K, you better or I'll call your customer service and tell them you're incompetent too. Oh, okay. Quick walk to the double doors in the back. Safe for now. Look up the phone number for our bakery manager. No answer. Call our second decorator. No answer. Call the master decorator. She picks up. Little upset because I called her while she was having dinner with the family, and I hastily explain what's going on. She starts apologizing to me profusely that she forgot this nutcase should be coming in today. She forgot to tell me. So this lady spent an hour with second decorator, with master decorator in the background, with Karen who ordered three birthday cakes, that two tears. Decorators kept the white copy with letters at the top, needs to pay, and gave Karen the yellow copy and a barcode with $150 bakery goods written at the top. She was told to take the barcode up front, pay and ask for two receipts. She keeps one and brings back the other receipt to attach to our copy, saying it's paid for, and we have the green light to make her cakes. She never came back. That was over a week ago, my master decorator explained. She told me next to call for Awesome Manager, who is that location's store manager, ASAP to the back put him on the phone. So I did. She told me while she talks to him to go ask this Karen for the receipt that she should have. AM came to the back. He's tall, bald, and looks like he's been in the army. He's not, but he's seen some SH. Shortly explained the situation and handed the phone over. Enter me, serious face and straight posture, about to throw down this Karen professional gentleman style. I walk up to her. One look at her and she looks like she's about to burst into the Hulk. Looking back at it now, I think it's hilarious because very pregnant Karen look angry. Me, excuse me ma'am, I just talked to a manager, he'll be here shortly. Do you happen to have the receipt for your order? Very smug smirk, half expecting her to actually hand me a real receipt. She hands me the barcode you scan to pay. I'm laughing internally. I tell the lady calmly that this is not a receipt. This is a barcode to pay for a product. She starts to yell at me that I'm once again incompetent and an idiot when I hear the double doors in the back loudly swing open. In steps in AM. AM, hello, please don't yell at my employee. Could you please tell me what's going on? She flips from Hulk Karen to pure innocent pregnant Karen. K, I was just trying to pick up my cakes for my baby cousin and my two other children. We're having a birthday party today and, <laughs> and I paid for my cakes and they never made them. I need those cakes, or you could just give me these cakes. Points to the half plain sheet cake in our decorator station. For free, I can't spend any more money. I can't work at the moment since I'm pregnant. Blank stares at my AM. Where's the receipt? K. She has it in her hands. They should have it on their copy. To AM. Takes the barcode from my hands. AM. Ma'am, this isn't a receipt. Where's your receipt? K. That's it, right there. Cuts her off. AM. No, this is not a receipt. This is a barcode that you use to pay for something. If this is a receipt, where's the person's name that checked you out? The time? The date? She starts to stutter and slowly starts morphing back to Hulk Karen, yelling that she needs those cakes for her children, that she's pregnant and deserves those cakes now. She stomped her foot. She's throwing a tantrum because she's not getting free cake. I look over at AM after Karen finishes her stomping and he looks as amused as I am watching paint dry. She starts to demand a number for corporate customer service. AM pulls out a card with his name and the number for both corporate and customer service for complaints. She takes it, still yelling how we are all idiots stealing. 
She turns around with her empty card, still yelling how we're all stupid, when she does something I've never seen the like of before. She gives us one more look over her shoulder, pushes her card over, like tipped over, and she proceeds to sprint to the door. Karen, who looks eight months pregnant, is sprinting like an Olympic runner to the front doors. I'm stunned. AM looks at me and sighs. I'll be right back. He starts to jog down one of the aisles, calls for one of the boys doing carts outside to look for this lady and what kind of car she's driving, along with the license plate. I'm standing there. Customers are looking at me like WTF, and I just kind of give a sorry about that to everyone in the vicinity. I go back to do my dishes, thinking, did I imagine this whole scenario? Did the cleaning fumes finally get to my brain? AM eventually comes back, asks if I'm okay. I am. He tells me that they have her face on camera. She'll go on the board. We have a board of customers to look out for that are banned up front, but she had no license plate on her old beaten up truck. We laugh and he tells me of worse stories of Karen's that he's had to deal with when he was new. This was nothing for him. He gave me a 15% coupon that's given to employees for my trouble and said if there's any more news with her, he'd let me know. Sure enough, he comes back an hour later when I'm getting ready to leave, smiley. Says, guess who just called back? No way. So this Karen, not 10 minutes after she left, called him back to yell at him that she called customer service and they said he's to give her three free cakes and a refund. His reply that it was Saturday and the call service is not open on the weekend. He said she screamed and hung up. That was my first Karen and entitled person mixed into a ball of fun. And the last story is, entitled customer mad that I won't keep the restaurant open until 12 a.m. so he can ring in the new year. When I was 18, I was the manager at a mom and pop restaurant that was connected to a hotel. The holidays were always super busy, with mainly big groups of families who would come into town together for vacation. A week before New Year's, I got a call from a hotel guest asking if we would be willing to keep the restaurant open until 12 a.m. so he and his family of 10, six kids, four adults, could ring in the New Year there. I get them all wanting to be together and can't hate someone for trying. I explained to him that because it was New Year's, our normal closing time of 9 p.m. would actually be changed to 8 p.m. This was not my idea but the owner's. He then started yelling at me, telling me it was inappropriate and it shows poor work ethic to leave early. He then asked me how in the world I thought it was okay for us to close so early so we can all go and drink and party when he wanted to dine there and give us extra business. I let him know that it was not my decision but the owner's and the reason we were closing early was because we were understaffed and those working the night shift would have to be back in the morning time to open the restaurant and we wanted to ensure everyone would get enough rest to work a busy breakfast shift. He then told me that we should have been smart enough to hire more people on for the holidays. Right, because it's so easy to hire temporary people to work Christmas and New Year's. While we were understaffed, my excuse to him wasn't entirely true, but it was the best I could come up with at the time. I would like to think if this situation happened now, I would tell him that service industry workers deserve time off to celebrate the holidays just as much as they do. I would also explain to him that business-wise, we would probably lose money paying the cooks, waitstaff, and dishwasher to stay for four adults, because realistically the children will not eat much, and we would not get liquor sales from them. While I understand 8pm is early to be closing, it really is no one's business. We were not a chain business or affiliated with the hotel in any way so no one else but us has a say in our hours. Even with us stopping service at 8 p.m. that night, I still didn't get out until about 11 p.m. with all the lingering customers and cleanup. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.